Some years ago, a state legislator heard an old friend had taken a job with the statewide cooperative association, and he said, oh, the grain people. He wasn't exactly wrong, but there's much, much more. Alongside the grain, farm supply, and motor fuel cooperatives that serve America's rural communities, there are food, health care, and housing co-ops, cooperative ethanol producers, credit unions and farm credit services, dairy production and processing co-ops, livestock marketing and genetics cooperatives, and town mutual insurance companies. When somebody turns on the lights at one of those co-op offices, chances are the power comes from an electric cooperative. When they contact their members or turn on the TV, oftentimes that service is provided by a local telephone and telecommunications co-op. In Madison, Wisconsin, there's even a taxicab company organized as a cooperative. In Wisconsin and Minnesota, more than 600 cooperatives, owned by more than 3 million members, provide these products and services. But what makes cooperatives different? Many things. They're owned and controlled by their members through elected boards of directors. One member, one vote. Instead of operating for a profit, co-ops return surplus revenues to their members based on each member's use of co-op services. And they practice concern for their communities, offering scholarships and youth education programs, channeling loans and grants to needed local economic development activity, and providing mutual aid to other co-ops and their members whenever and wherever natural disaster strikes. Part of America's great self-help tradition, cooperatives are member-owned businesses delivering quality goods and services at an affordable price. And there's more than a grain of truth in all that. <laughs>